Uh, I want to kind of switch gears a little bit and talk about how technology is affecting the industry. We touched on it uh, briefly with Michael uh, and, and Carmen earlier about the uh, involvement of robo-advisors, but I also want to talk about peer-to-peer uh, -peer lending, algorithmic strategies uh, uh, for, for trading firms in the industry, and, and seeing how all of this technology is affecting this industry and the, and the entire uh, investment community. Um, I want to bring up a journalist, uh, Jan Henrik Forrester, that I work with uh, very closely. Oh no, sorry, I'm skipping ahead. So I, I got so excited for Jan that I forgot. Uh, Tom Serafagas is, is a, an ETF guy at Bloomberg, uh, at Bloomberg Intelligence, and he's going to give you a, a little demonstration about how the Bloomberg uh, terminal works uh, with the ETF industry. Tom? <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Sorry, skip that. He got so excited on robo-advising that he skipped over this. Um, there was this fun fact that Matt said on the first panel about uh, this Bernstein report. I don't know if anyone's seen it. It was several years ago, but they were really vocal against passive investing and indexing. I don't know if anyone knows, but they ended up launching a few ETFs in the U.S., uh, you know, index-linked ETFs. So my colleague says it's the equivalent of them joining the Communist Party now. Uh, but, you know, we've done this, these panels across a few different cities now. This is the last leg, and the turnout of these events Oh, excuse me, the turnout at these events has been fantastic. Uh, and one you know, kind of key theme that I, I've seen is obviously the thirst for more tools and for more information on just analyzing ETFs. So I'm part of a group called Bloomberg Intelligence, or BI. We have you know, uh, about 400 or so analysts that cover sectors, macro strategy, rates. But we also have a team that covers exclusively ETFs. Um, so I'm going to kind of go through some of the actual tools and tangible functionalities on the terminal where you can access some of the information that was brought up here. So again, Bloomberg has a whole suite of ETF solutions, right, from trading. Uh, but the group that I'm part of in, again, BI, is for analyzing ETFs. We have a lot of great functionalities on the terminal. There are two things I want to just highlight before we go into it. I know it's a little difficult to see it in the back. Uh, this deck is for distribution, so if anyone is interested in some, you know, in learning more about some of the functionalities, I'm going to be at these events. Uh, you know, just let me know, or you can always just find me on the terminal. I'm happy to share this or kind of walk through some of the things that I'm going to go through up here. This is sort of just a one-off slide, but I thought it was interesting just to kind of talk about the growth rates here in, in the European ETF market. This was done in 2015 by PwC, and they said that by 2021 it would be 1.6 trillion in assets in Europe. We're still three years off and we're already at a trillion. So that's only just another 600 or so billion left. I think it's just kind of caught everyone by surprise the, just the, the, the really strong growth rates here in Europe. So where you can find our research, it's very easy, BIETF. Um, there's really, uh, there's a lot going on on this page, but I think there's really two key areas I want to highlight. One sort of in the middle page where it says most recent. This is where myself and my colleagues will post any research that we, we think is interesting in the industry. Actually, this morning I posted a piece on uh, the European flows uh, year to date. So you can go there and you can check it out. Uh, there, anything that we think is relevant, flows data, we'll dig deeper into index methodologies. Anything that we think is really relevant or timely in the market, we'll post it there. The other really important uh, functionality is over on the left under the data library. Now, one thing I do want to highlight is that most of the work that we've done here has been for the U.S. market. And as the European market continues to develop and we get much more transparency in the data, we're also adding more and more European functionality onto BIETF. So it's sort of a learning process for, for all of us. But most of the things that you'll see here are U.S.-centric, but we do have some European functionalities too. Here in the data library, you can find a lot of different uh, functions, uh, fund flows year to day in the U.S. and it's broken up very granular. You can look at it uh, by asset class, right? So even in fixed income, you can target it by uh, credit quality, by maturity. You can look at equity, equity flows by sectors. You can look at commodities. All that is broken up very granular in the fund flows tab. We have added two new things that are, have gotten really great feedback and we're excited about. One being we've added uh, active flows. So you know, with a lot of the new products coming out, a lot of them are either smart beta or in the U.S. we have a lot of new, new active ETFs that are being launched. So it's important not only to look at flows and what's trending 
within the ETF ecosystem itself, but also alongside some of these active mutual funds too. So we've added this new functionality that now you can pull up active equity mutual funds, active equity, pass, uh, active equity fixed income funds, and really plot that against ETF flows, and you can really work with that data a little bit more. This just went on the, on the BI ETF uh, portal, so really excited about that. And it's not that we've completely neglected Europe. We do have a smart beta European tab that you can go to, and uh, we, we categorize it uh, into different like, smart beta categories, or like low volatility factor, momentum, multi-factor. Uh, all that can be found here. Here you can pull fund flow numbers, asset numbers. Uh, you can open it up, and you can pull down all the different uh, ETFs that comprise that bucket. This is a, a really great starting point for anyone looking to sort of research ETFs or get some really high level data. It's very easy on the terminal, it's just ETF enter. And this will get you to this page. This uh, functionality is global in nature, so you can really search for ETFs globally. If, someone's, if you're looking for the uh, European market, you can, if you put in Western Europe, it'll pull all the ETFs you know, listed on a Western European exchange. Here's a really good data point, and anyone who's really familiar with ETF Go will notice that we've changed it a little bit to make it more global and focused. So you can pull in, you know, here with the multiple share classes you have in Europe, you know, we don't have that in the US, but we added that, a new tab here, so you can look at fund level assets, share class level assets, performance. This is a really great starting point for anyone looking to research ETFs. This can then be exported out to Excel. And then where BI ETF comes in, we take a lot of this and we take it a level deeper. We really look through the data. We, we try to identify trends. We try to pull out anything that we think is interesting. Small media plug here, and I don't know if people are really familiar with my colleague in the US, Eric Baltunas. He has a dedicated ETF show in New York. It's 1 p.m. in New York. So it might, I don't know, 6 p.m. or 7 p.m. here. Uh, we've had some colleagues from this room have been on the show, but it really, you know, we bring in ETF experts from all over the industry, from the trading side, from the indexing side, from the issuer side. It just really talk about trends that they're seeing and really kind of dive deeper into, um, into the ETF world. We also have a podcast. That one's a little bit more uh, uh, basic in nature. It's really made for someone who is really kind of getting started in ETFs and wants to learn more. So, feel, you know, please check those out. But one thing that we've launched recently in February in the US was this rating system. So basically we look through all the different ETFs in the US and I'll, I'll go through how, we, how, we, how our logic works, but really try to rate ETFs looking at things that maybe aren't apparent just by the name alone or by you know, something that you'll see in the surface level. So again, one thing that I said that I pulled out from here is just the need for more education. Just in, and also to make, you know, if, if retail is a bigger focus here too, you know, tools need to be, it needs to make it much easier for the retail investor, right? If they have to go and start pulling data and mashing data together, it makes it very hard. This is a survey done by ETF Trends saying how much of the market still thinks that, this is a European survey, how much thinks that. There's still more education, right? About 60% of the market thinks that there's still, there's some, you know, uh, inadequate tools for, for analyzing ETFs. So it's a pretty, when you get the final score, so there's 11 factors that go into compiling the score. And the way we've done it, we just, we sort of like a traffic light. So we've given it uh, different colors, green, yellow, and red. Uh, and I'll show you how, when an ETF gets an infraction, kind of what goes into it, how many infractions pushes you into each different level. But green would basically be a very generic ETF that there's maybe not anything that we see surprising in the product itself, operationally, how it's constructed, how the index is built, uh, how it trades. And reds, you know, will be, and someone had mentioned XIV up here, uh, something like an XIV, you know, a levered ETN uh, volatility product would fall in that red category. But you're not gonna be able to see all the inputs in the back. We have about 11 inputs that go into calculating this score. So we'll look at things like uh, tax, how's the ETF, tra uh, what's the tax treatment, right? Depending on what, you know, gold, for example, US, depending on what product you buy, you have a very different tax treatment. Uh, one, you know, there's a lot of ETNs in the US. Uh, there's, there's counterparty risk there, that will flag. Someone here, the gentleman from Jane Street had mentioned about uh, high yield, right? And the high yield ETFs trade a lot, but also we'll look at for the ETF, we'll look at its underlying primary market too, and seeing that you know something like high yield or bank loans in the U.S., there could maybe be some potential primary market issues there. We'll, we'll look at that and flag that as well too. So we have a composite of 11 factors that go into calculating the score. So to sort of give you an idea of how things would plot, 
something like VOO, the Vanguard S&P 500, right, fully replicated ETF would be really on one side of the spectrum. That would be, we don't really see anything uh, worth highlighting, anything that we really see kind of an operational risk. Over on the other end of the spectrum would be something like your triple levered uh, VIX ETN, right? Um, TVIX, so we'll flag things like it uses leverage, it uses futures, so there's rolling costs involved. Uh, it's a note, so there might be counterparty risks. And then in the middle, again, something might be flagged for just alternative tax treatment, right? or a high yield ETF might get flagged for something like less liquid holdings. Again, we look through this entire spectrum and we'll plot ETFs uh, on this spectrum. Uh, and I'll show you also where you can access this, where you can pull this data, where you can pull the index, how we build this methodology, uh, where you can pull all that data. So real world example, this is the actual chart of XIV. Uh, it closed uh, in February. Well, in February there was a, you know, a lot of market volatility. This product lost about 90% of its value in one day. And funny enough, and it wasn't timed, we launched this system the same week that this happened. Um, and this product subsequently closed, you know, ticker was XIV. But to kind of, it, hindsight's always easier to show it, but it kind of shows you where all our volatility products would have plotted on the, on the spectrum. So you can see all the volatility products have gotten a red. Now, some might have more infractions than others, but a, a volatility product would definitely fall into the red, uh, into the red uh, category. And also, when you pull this up on the terminal, it lists out all the infractions itself. So it doesn't just say, it's not a black box to say, hey, we give it this rating, you don't know what goes into it. All the infractions can be pulled up. You can sort by infractions. You can see, okay, this is exactly what we see as a, as a risk to this product. This is in the U.S. how things, uh, how, how things plot. So, you know, not all the ETFs are ranked because obviously new products come to market. Uh, you know, they need to trade a little bit before we can start pulling data on them. But most of the products here in the U.S. either fall in the zero or one. So a lot of them that we know, um, that's where a lot of the, you know, the Vanguard products, for example, fall a lot of the, just the market cap weighted beta exposure products will fall there. And then you have across the entire spectrum of just how things plot in the US. Now again, as data becomes more transparent here in Europe, we really had like to take this methodology and apply it across the European market, uh, you know, realizing that there's some unique issues obviously here in Europe than there are in the US. So where you can access this information, uh, in the data library under BIETF, on a normal day, you can just pull up ETF traffic light system and here it'll have all the ETFs that are ranked, uh, the color that is given, the number of infractions, and also what the infractions are. So you can search by, let's say, any ETF that has primary market issues that we're flagging. You can search for those. You can search by index, by ETF issuer. So normally this is right on the, um, on the data library, but it's down for maintenance, but you can still access it. So I'll show you where you're able to get it. So BIETF, enter, one, enter. Uh, there you'll have, we have a piece that we've written out on the traffic light. So our methodology behind it, what we think about it, how you could use it. Two, you can also pull the actual methodology document. It's a multiple page document. And there it has for each input how we're actually calculating it, what the Bloomberg fields are, how we're measuring it. Again, it's, it's a very transparent process of how we're ranking these ETFs. And then third, there's a spreadsheet there for now that you can pull, you can download it. All the things that we had shown on the, on the dashboard there are now on the spreadsheet, so you can sort, you can export, you can work with that data as you wish. Once the engineering and some of the, the you know, legwork is done, it's gonna be back on the, uh, on the data library. But again, any, I know I went fast, there was a lot, of, a lot of data here, but I'll be at this event. Also, you can find me on the terminal. Uh, you know, feel free to, if you just wanna talk ETFs or you wanna know more about this or have any of the ideas, uh, you know, we're happy to hear them. But you know, thank you for your time.